are now listening to the voice of Tamar with Vanessa Santiago. Hey y'all, here we are for another podcast. Today has been a crazy day. I would give you guys the details, but you know, what's the point? Something about rough days draws me even closer, not only to worship, but the word of God. I read my Bible often, but there is a deeper, I don't know, there's just a deeper seek at times where I experience things that I don't have languages for. And the Lord, through his word, just begins to breathe life back into me. I'm very open about the fact that I love Jesus Christ and I serve him and he has been a very vital and instrumental tool in my healing process and journey. And so I was just reading the Bible and I felt a grace to do this podcast. I've been praying for quite some months, honestly, about sharing this particular story. So growing up, unfortunately, my mom had an addiction issue and it was pretty intense pretty severe and the church became the place where I ran to and kind of escaped from my everyday living I would go into details about how horrible uh, my living situation was but I know that that is an area of my life in regards to my relationship with my mom that God is still trying to heal and mend. And before I speak on that topic, I want to make sure that the Lord cleanses my heart from my mother-daughter relationship so that when I am speaking about it, I'm not speaking from a place of pain that people can relate to and not have steps on how to move forward beyond that point. And so I would really find safety um, in church because that is that is a place of safety. That is a place where you are supposed to be met with refuge. I would go to church as often as the church was open. We went on Tuesday. We went on Wednesday. We went on Thursday. We went on Friday. And we went on Sunday twice. And I was there every single time the door is open. And in fact, I actually sat in the very front of the church on the right hand side in the corner and it didn't matter if nobody else was on that front row like that's where I was just gonna be at unfortunately during that time there was not like a lot of supervision for me I was just one that was always consistently in the church and around and because I was so comfortable there I found myself just roaming the halls at times and being there when nobody was necessarily there or when there were only a few people there and I was unfortunately violated in the church I think it's important to share what that violation consisted of because it just matters and so the individual that would molest me in the church would fondle me in ways that made me feel very uncomfortable and unfortunately unfortunately this individual was the children's pastor church her is something that people um, say very loosely all the time i mean i hear it i know about it i have experienced it it is a real thing it is not an excuse to turn away from the church and a deeper relationship with jesus but at times people misrepresent God and they misrepresent him horribly. It is an indicator of why people need Jesus. But in this case, it is a little bit more than that. I mean, it's just a little bit more than that. I was violated. That is something completely different than so-and-so didn't say hi to me when they whisked past me because they had to use the bathroom. That's not church hurt. This might fall under the category of church hurt. And so I would find myself in these positions where I was going to the bathroom and I would run into this man and he would stick his hand on my pants. And I'm sorry if this is cringy or it triggers um, people, but I think that it's important to (laughs) at times just share the reality and the rawness of a story. And so it was very confusing to me because this person (laughs) was one that was a children's pastor like of all people I mean nobody should be a molester nobody should be raping and violating people but in my mind out of all the people who could have done such a heinous thing why would it be one who has been put in charge of leading young people and so that completely messed with my head for a very 
very, very long time. And it's probably why I put my pastor, <laughs> Pastor Melvin Cross, through the ringer because at that point, not only had there been an absent father at that time in my life, but then another male figure who was put in a place of authority had violated me. So I would experience that often. And it honestly, I mean, at that point, I had been violated and molested so many times by so many different other men that I was numb to it. I didn't even think it was bad at that point. I always felt very uncomfortable by it, but I didn't know what to do. I mean, that that church was my place of safety. The alternative, unfortunately, in my home was chaos. And so when I ended up leaving that church, I got a little bit older. I ended up moving in with my dad and having a better understanding of Jesus, but not really intimately knowing him. I remember I once had a conversation with my mom. And she shared with me that that same children's pastor had been accused by another young lady of molesting her as well. Unfortunately, in this situation, that young lady was not believed because of the clothes that she wore. And so this young lady, I guess, in the eyes of the people who decided to not believe her, wore skirts that were too tight and she didn't live the lifestyle according to how they believed that she should. And so um, not only did they suggest that she was lying, but they said that if it was true that this individual had molested her, it was because her skirt was too tight. And so once again, very similarly to my brother who lived a lifestyle that nobody agreed with, I was put in a position where if I did not speak up, if I did not speak up and say that it had also happened to me, that person would not have been believed. And so I began to share with my mom at the time what had happened to me and how that individual had violated me as well. I don't know what happened after that conversation the point that I'm trying to make, one of the, the driving points is that unfortunately in religion at times there is this idea. Well, actually, you know what? I can't even say in religion. When people lack the real knowledge and wisdom and heart of a shepherd or nature of God, they tend to hide every gross representation of God that really needs legal justice under this cloud of grace. But listen, y'all, <laughs> you can only take grace so far. And I mean that with a little bit of sarcasm, but what I'm saying is that this idea that grace would allow you to sweep a pedophile in your ministry under the rug is a very gross cover up for this desire to hold up a great reputation. I wish that I could say that this has been the only example of violation and forms of molestation within the church context, but because this is a work that I have not only been very open about and shared publicly, I've heard several people share stories about being molested or violated within the church and some of them have never returned to the house of God as a result of that. That thing just grieves me it messes me up and so I know over two handfuls unfortunately of men and women who have been violated with in the church context by someone who was a trusted leader or even just a member in the church and they have not returned not only to God but to church since then. I can honestly understand why one would feel that way one of the major things that impacted me and allowed me to see God for who he really is, is when I had a greater and more intimate relationship with him. When you are young or a child, you are getting to know God by way of your parents or by your mentor or by your pastor, your youth leader, your children's leader. And if not done right, that leader can at times be the only person that you see that represents Jesus versus that leader being the one that draws you closer to Jesus and gives you, you know, such a fire that you would want to know him 
And so it's understandable that as children, we at times get to know God through other people. And so when those people misrepresent God in such a heinous way, like molestation, rape, or some form of violation, it is hard for us to see God as a God of justice as a God of grace. I posted a Facebook stat after reading this book, After They Touch Me, which is by Sharona Drake, about how I had a very hard time embracing the authoritative names of God. And I believe that this was one of the reasons I've been violated by people who were in authority. I was violated by people who were supposed to be ones that would cover me like a shepherd. I've been violated by those who are ones who lead specific uh, missions and churches like have lordship over so those authoritative names of God at times really made me cringe and I know that the root cause of that was not only the violation but the fact that after I found safety after already being violated I was once again wounded in a place that was supposed to be me hiding you know and and all that while escaping my own traumatic home beyond my violation. I'm saying that because I, I, I want you to know that I understand what it's like to be hurt in a church. And maybe it wasn't a violation. Maybe it wasn't any form of molestation. Maybe it was just somebody mishandling you or misunderstanding you. Or there's so many reasons why people can be turned away from the idea of getting to know God because of their experience in a church. But one of the most pivotal moments of my entire life was when I was seeking God and I was praying the way that my mother and my father taught me to pray the way that I saw my grandmother pray and God began to respond to me in a way where I did not necessarily need someone to stand in proxy for me to have that conversation with the Lord and so during a conference the Lord just ministered to my heart and I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and there was a deeper understanding that I had of him and even then it still took a good amount of time before I could really know God intimately to know his nature to know that those moments where those people had violated me and taken advantage of me that was not how God would handle me Ever since that moment, ever since I realized that people misrepresent Christ, ever since I realized that that pedophiles can be found anywhere, I, I was a little bit more open to going to church. When I say all of these things, I don't now void that the church has to have a great level of discernment so that in moments where somebody may be trying to creep into their ministry, they one don't identify it but then two handle it accordingly once i was able to walk very closely with my leaders and seeing how they handled situations that were uncomfortable but so necessary in order to protect those that god had put under them to lead although i know that there are moments where we do miss the mark i know that if you really seek god with your whole heart and you carry his heart you will have the wisdom and the discernment to handle situations. If you are staffed properly, if you take very practical steps on who you let in into your leadership, my goodness, if we are going to have people leading our children's ministry, can we do like a background check? Can we do something so easy and do a background check? I mean, people smile and wear clown suits and have entire bounce houses and are pedophiles. I mean, the last thing, you know what? I'm going to pull back from that because I'll get upset. But what I'm saying is that there is a level of discernment, wisdom, knowledge that you have to have in your ministry when you are choosing to shepherd people. Because the last thing you want to do is have God's children under your care and you have willingly opened the door because of your lack of discernment. But one thing that we do not do is that we do not hide someone who has these pedophile behaviors under the cloud of grace. You know what we do? We obey the laws of the land. And if I don't know anything about my Jesus, my savior, one of my favorite names and qualities that he carries is that he is a God of justice. Proverbs 31, eight and nine says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Hello, children. Ensure justice for those 
who are crushed. Hello, do you, can you can we talk about the fact that somebody who's been molested can probably feel crushed and confused? Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless. Can we uh, just determine that helpless could be some child who has no knowledge of what sexual violation is and how wrong it is? The point that I'm trying to make is that the Lord is just and he calls and requires us to seek justice for those who cannot help themselves. And that includes children. That includes vulnerable women. That includes vulnerable men. Because can I say that although I know a lot of women are drawn to my podcast, I know plenty of men who have been sexually assaulted in general, but even those within the church. It is our responsibility as watchmen on the wall, as as those who who, who sit in leadership roles in ministries to have the discernment to see these pedophiles and remove them from our ministry. Now, in addition to that, because I believe in the redeeming power of Jesus Christ is that there is uh, forgiveness, there is grace, and there is mercy for someone who has a struggle with pedophilia. And they can figure that out while they're in prison. Because did I mention that God is the God of justice? Grace and mercy is not absent of consequence. Y'all, I had a very bad driving record. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that driving record came with me because bad behavior has consequences. And so we cannot use grace and mercy to cover up such a, a horrible transgression for fear of how our ministry will look because we represent Jesus and Jesus is the redeemer. So in the event that you do have to stand before your congregation and tell them that you missed the mark and unfortunately someone entered your ministry and violated several people, God's grace and mercy will cover you. But one thing you can't do is sweep it under the rug and not believe that it is going to uh, create a large, a large, a large problem, one that will be answered to in heaven. And when I am saying this, I, I have no aggression towards any pastor, any leader. I believe in the redemption even in them for any mistake that they have made. But I think that one thing that has to happen is repentance. And that repentance doesn't always have to be platform on a Facebook stat but I think that when you truly repent there is a fruit that comes out of it that looks like something and I've not unfortunately in the three four five situations that I have known about and one that I have experienced seeing that a pastor has handled it correctly in my limited perspective Unfortunately, this is something that people whisper about silently when it comes to the church. I mean, sex, molestation, rape, violation, all of that seems to be something that nobody talks about within the church. It is an uncomfortable topic, but here God has me talking about it. And so I know that it is something that one can do. I want to be very clear in explaining that I believe in the church, meaning the building with the people, with the pastors, with the leaders. I know that we are not perfect. I know that we make mistakes. I know that there are moments where situations, circumstances come up and we don't necessarily know how to handle it. But I do believe in the church for several reasons. Why? Because it was a source of pain for me. It was a, a place where I did experience a violation. But I also experienced a great healing in a church. I was restored. I was renewed. I was able to identify that my identity was rooted in Christ. I was able to see that my violation and my rape was not the thing that defined me. What we need to do is be very mindful of the fact that churches have people in them that are flawed. And I know that we hold churches to a higher standard, especially if you come from a broken family because your expectation is that the church will then replace that area of your life where you probably lacked and didn't have healthy relationships. But just know that you go into the church broken and that and everybody is literally in a church sick 
and in need of some form of healing and so you are going to experience some head body some moments where things are not necessarily perfect and I don't mean violation that's not a mistake that's that's an issue but there are moments where the church doesn't always get it right but we are consistently and constantly striving to look more and more and more like Jesus Christ and so my hope in this podcast is that you would understand that one situation with one church does not represent God and his nature that there are moments where you have to go to another church maybe one where you did not experience that ch- that hurt and that pain and really get to know God and I know that we can get to know God on our own when we're praying when we are listening to worship music but there is something about community that accelerates the healing process because there's a level of pressure that comes when you really draw into the actual building and build relationship with people within the church the church literally saved my life i'm talking about suicidal i'm talking about behaviors that would have let led me into a a dark and very depressive hole i'm talking about moments where i could have been dead because of the decisions that I was making and I found refuge in the church of Jesus Christ and so there are bad things that happen in churches but that is not the nature of God and it is not the defining thing of every single church. I just want to read one final scripture because one of the most pivotal moments for me in healing from my sexual assault within the church so that I can see God clear and not see him through the eyes of my pain that happened in the building where I was supposed to find safety in him. The scripture that that really began to transform my mind is Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. And it says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of behavior that are evil instead be kind to each other tender-hearted forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you I felt like I could have had 10,000 reasons to be angry bitter and rage and slander the church where I had experienced my violation I felt like I had a million reasons why I did not need to forgive or be tender hearted or even believe that God's grace, mercy or forgiveness would be extended to the man who molested me within the church. But as I get to know God, I understand that his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness is extended to all men. And there are moments where we don't believe that that thing should be extended to those who hurt me most, but we will minimize and give more than enough grace to other situations. The murderer, I'll extend grace to, but it was a little bit harder for me to extend grace to someone who molested or raped a child because I had experienced that. But if I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, then I have to believe that he forgives all all people and when I say forgiveness that does not mean pacifying but forgiveness not only is for the person who violated you the person who hurt you the church who hurt you but it is for you for me why because I cannot let God have my whole entire heart if I leave areas of it filled with bitterness and anger and rage it says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and there are moments where we speak in a very angry and bitter and harsh and unforgiving way because we've not surrendered all the things that have hurt us to the lord i had to go through a journey y'all where i decided to forgive that person within the church who violated me where I had to forgive the pastor who did not have the proper leadership or wisdom and discernment around him to identify that there was a predator in the midst I also then had to extend even more forgiveness to that pastor for believing that the young lady who 
had said that he had violated her as well deserved that violation because of what she had on and I'm not saying that he doesn't have to answer to God for what he said or or you know I don't even know if he's repented I don't know what his heart has has done since this whole situation has happened but I know that he cannot live rent free in my heart and you do that when you make a decision to not forgive people and so in order for me to progress and grow in God there were things that I needed it to let go and those were a few people that I needed to forgive in order to live a life fully surrendered to God and 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 embody and embrace all that he is and if he's forgiving to me after my abortion after leaving him like I didn't know him after you know denying him after living a sinful life after having a child out of wedlock after all of the things that I've done, then I have to believe that there is grace and mercy extended to everyone else and forgiveness given to everyone else. And so I hope that that gives you a greater understanding. I hope that it gives you another perspective. And I hope that most of all, you will not be one that walks around angry and bitter with the church because of an experience that you had within one that did not have the proper leadership, wisdom, guidance, or discernment from the Holy Spirit. And so I am going to pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice, God. You know their experience. You know their hurt. You know moments where they have been mishandled. You know that many of them, God, may have been violated within the church by trusted leadership or random members or musicians or just so many different people could have violated them within the church context God and that has in ways jaded the way that they see you and so right now Father I pray that you would begin to allow them to see you God for who you really are the God that's full of mercy the God that's full of grace the God that is one that is just the one that cries when he sees his children hurt and wounded Father I pray that you would reintroduce yourself to them that they would have a supernatural experience with you God that would not allow them to deny that you are a powerful God that has been mindful of them since the beginning God I pray right now in the name of Jesus that people would begin to forgive themselves God that they would not walk around bitter and angry and enraged and slandering and just speaking so ill and evil of other people God but that you would cleanse their heart and purify their hearts in such a way where they will be able to forgive the person who has wounded them God I pray now Lord Jesus that you would teach us not only how to heal and process our pain but have the courage to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves like your word says in Proverbs 31 8 and 9 God I thank you that as we continue to heal we would be ones that will speak up for the poor and the helpless God and that we would seek justice for those who cannot seek justice for themselves Father but most of all God I just pray that you would give them a a new measure of, of understanding of who you are absent of the misrepresentation of you by your sons and your daughters God I thank you that you would remind them that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was and his shed blood was for them for their sins for their wounds for their pains God and that they would know that you have been so close to them and even in moments when they feel brokenhearted when they think about these situations that they would understand that that this is when you are most near and so God I just bless you and I thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice that they would understand the value of community that they would understand that that engaging with people within your home within your church the actual physical building is so necessary for the growth of a, of the believer god we thank you that you can minister and talk to us on our own but in community we can strive and progress in ways that we cannot do it on our own and so i pray that there are new measure of trust and belief for the church would begin to arise and everybody under the sound of my voice that anybody who has been hurt and violated by leadership and and anybody under the church umbrella father including even if it was a god that you would just 
allow them, Father, to let that go so that they can begin their process of healing and partner it with you. I bless you and I thank you and I honor you for you are faithful. 